going on, people? Mike C-Town here. Happy Metal Monday. In keeping with tradition with my Metal Monday series, I'll be talking about a new album that came out recently, as well as giving attention to an older album that may have came out previously. So the first record I'm going to talk about is the new Death Heaven record entitled New Bermuda. I enjoyed Sunbather. Um, I never got into these heated debates over what label to call it, simply because, as I've said before, I just don't give a fuck about labels, scenes, hipsters, or anything else like that. You know, I'm an adult who loves music, and I judge a band's music, for the most part, on the music alone. Um, so I was a bit interested in what these guys were going to do next, um, and for the most part, I was satisfied. The one thing I noticed with this album is it's a bit more aggressive than Sunbather. It has those signature shoegaze elements, uh, but the metal parts are a bit heavier, they're a bit angrier, meaner, and a bit darker, and, uh, you know, the guitars are chunkier, and the vocals are even a bit darker, and, dare I say, a little bit more evil. The first song, Brought to the Water, for example, that first riff is absolutely fantastic, and the song carries that momentum throughout the majority of it, but, um, when it gets to the clean part, it does get a little bit weird. Listen, to me, Death Heaven, they are the kings of poor transitions. A lot of times, their songs, to me, come off like a big mess of riffs, with no centralized theme or cohesion. They still work, but they don't seem to have a continuous thought throughout them. Uh, it'll just be metal, clean part, metal, clean part, you know, with no real transition from one part to the next. And most of the times, this, this comes off fine, but... Occasionally, it can sound a little bit awkward, um, like on this song, Brought to the Water. It just seems like the clean part comes in out of nowhere, and it has no real purpose except to just be there. You know, it doesn't really fit with the, with the rest of the song. It doesn't benefit the song in any way, shape, or form. And aside from that, it sounds like the melody from Sixpence None the Richer's Kiss Me. Kiss me. Me, 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 going high in the green, green grass. I wasn't even going to mention that at all, but my man Rich Owens confirms that he thought the exact same thing, so I don't feel like a nutso saying that. One song where I think the quieter part actually worked really well was Come Back. The transition wasn't great, but it was probably the best on the album, and I actually liked the clean part of this song. You know, it went from that kind of Cocteau Twin sounding part to something that I feel like The Cure would have done in one of their more mellow or sadder songs. Even though I feel like if they'd chosen a sadder chord for that rhythm guitar in the background, that this part would have been so much better. The momentum is kept up with songs like Luda and Onto Baby Blue, which to me was a really interesting song, even though the clean part at the beginning sounds a bit derivative. You know, it, it works, it's just derivative. There's nothing in that part that really holds my attention or even interests me that much and it goes on a bit too damn long but when it gets heavy it comes off as something that like envy or isis would do and i found that lead in there to be quite good even though it's my least favorite song on the album uh the closer gifts for the earth it sounds like vintage emo to me and i mean good emo i'm talking about christy front drive or older promise ring and then it gets into a part that sounds like vintage screamo and I'm talking about stuff like uh, uh, Union of Uranus and while elements of that song are interesting I don't know that it really came together all that well it wasn't a bad song it's just probably my least favorite because the parts themselves didn't really connect as well as they could have overall I enjoyed this record I thought it was good I enjoyed the aggression on this one more than I did on Sunbather you know, the harder riffs spoke to me a little bit more. You know, I'm not one to pretend that they're reinventing the wheel with this album or any other albums because, listen, I could run off a list of bands that I feel do this sound just as well as Death Heaven. Uh, bands like I'll Say, Amasaurs, Astronoid, Lantlos, uh, Valandusk, and Autumn for Crippled Children. You know, but who cares? At the end of the day, Death Heaven still put out a good metal record, and that's all I was expecting or wanting. I feel like the people that are overhyping this record are ones whose knowledge of the genre and the sound is a little bit limited. And that's okay, you know, there's nothing wrong with liking DiGiorno's uh, if you don't know that there's great world-renowned pizza chefs out in the world. You know, with DiGiorno's you still walk away full, so it served its purpose, but 
once you start to find these great pizza chefs, I feel like you'll only get a taste for DiGiorno's on a really rare occasion. The people who are so disappointed in this record, I feel like, are the ones who overhyped Death Heaven in the first place. You know, they're the ones who acted like Death Heaven was doing this insanely different and creative music instead of just taking them for what they are, a band that made accessible black metal. I feel like a lot of you vampires were just sitting around waiting for someone to come along and open the door and invite you in. And I feel like Death Heaven did that. And maybe some of you guys are just a little bit too thankful to them for that. You thought they changed the face of black metal with Sunbather, and you were expecting them to do the same thing with this record. And when they didn't, you cried about it. And Sunbather was good for what it is. It's a metal record with screamo, post-rock, and shoegaze elements to it. Or it's a fucking screamo record with black metal, post-rock, and shoegaze elements to it. But I don't give a shit which one you pick. At the end of the day, they make good music, and that's all that matters. And what you slugs need to understand is that black metal hasn't been waiting around for some kind of savior because it doesn't need saving. You know, Death Heaven isn't the Kendrick Lamar of black metal. You know, they're not the Moses parting the Red Sea of good and bad black metal. Black metal was doing just fine before Death Heaven, better according to some people, and it'll do just fine after Death Heaven. You know, they offer a nice middle ground for black metal, and I think people should just leave it at that. You guys are putting Death Heaven on far too high of a pedestal. You know, you're holding them to way too high of a standard. You know, they're a band that makes good metal albums. You know, they made a good one with Sunbather, and they made another good one with New Bermuda. But it kind of ends there. You know, because with, with metal albums that have been coming out this year, like Leviathan, Miss for Ming, Megwa, Cattle Decapitation, uh, Ethereal Shroud, Kiwis, Heathen, Luvia, you know, I don't see this album being in my top 10 or 20 or 25 for the end of the year list. But that's okay. Any way you look at it, they serve their purpose, they put out a good record, and you guys should check it out. The next album I'm going to talk about is Dawn, Slaughter Sun. Dawn is a black metal band from Sweden. They kind of began as a melodic death metal band in the vein of the Red in the Sky era, At the Gates, mixed with maybe like older and tuned. But they later developed into a more melodic, blackened death metal band by the release of their first official album, which was Nair Solen Gar. Knifer for Evoker, and I'm sure I fucking butchered the shit out of that. But moving on, by the time they got to their third full-length album, which is Slaughter Sun, they were pretty much doing straightforward melodic black metal, and they immediately fell into that same category as bands like Swordmaster or Sacramentum, and they were blending that line of like melodic black metal and melodic death metal beautifully. I still remember hearing this album for the very first time in my friend John's apartment and being blown away. I immediately went home and ordered the CD. You know, from the second, the first song, the Nell in the World hits, I was instantly floored. And I'm still floored to this day by that song. It's just insanely great riffing, fast drumming with fucking perfect vocals. The songs on this album stick to a relatively basic formula, relatively simple riffs, with nothing overly flashy. Uh, they knew how to put together a solid black metal song without adding too many elements to it. They knew that making something overly complicated doesn't always necessarily make it good. Sometimes it just makes it cluttered. So instead, they mastered the art of writing great hypnotic riffs, which is all you need with a great black metal song. What they did was they knew how to take a tremolo-picked riff and stretch it out into the meat of the song without it getting boring. And that's not to say that these guys aren't great musicians. The musicianship on this album is stellar. The riffs here are all fantastic. The drumming is amazing. And luckily for us, this isn't your necro-style production where you can't hear anything that's going on. For the most part, these guys have a pretty clear production style without it sounding too polished. From the Nell in the World, the album stays consistent with a barrage of seriously fantastic riffing. And the second that song ends, Facula hits you in the face immediately with another blazing, fast wall of sound. And every song has that same feel. There are even moments with some keyboard uh, passages that would sound cheesy on other albums, but they seem to work really well on this one. And with that hazy but well-balanced production, they give the album this perfect bit of added atmosphere that makes it such a masterpiece. You know, they straddle that fence 
with aggression on one side and melancholy on the other side really well. You know, one minute you're getting this, this angry, pissed off, break everything riff, and the next you're getting this really depressing, almost introspective sounding part that really brings you back down. The album closer, Malediction Murder, is the perfect angry opus to the end of this album. The main riff is one of the better riffs on this album, and it sounds like the drummer is just beating the fuck out of his drums the entire time. Every song on here is absolutely fantastic, but some of my favorite moments have to be that whole opening part of The Nell in the World, uh, the bouncy, kind of Iron Maiden-ish dueling guitar part on the Ophelian Deserts, and the last few minutes of Malediction Murder that ends this album on the highest note possible. Overall, this is a fantastic piece of 90s melodic black metal. Extremely well done riffs, masterful songwriting, lyrics that are just drowning in pessimism and misanthropy, um, and just sung by one of the better black metal vocals to come from that era. You know, I listen to this album probably once a month because it's just that good. You know, it's hypnotizing, it's mesmerizing, and it's just one of the most quality pieces of metal to come out of the 90s. So if you've not heard Dawn's Slaughter Son, make sure you get your ass up right now and go check that album out because it's absolutely amazing. So that's it for this edition of Metal Monday. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you guys leave some comments in the comment section down there, whether it's about what you thought of this new Death Heaven record or what you thought of the old Dawn Slaughter Sun record. Either way, let above a know. All right? As usual, thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you, and I will see you guys next time. All right? Peace, bitches!